Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Now it's time for us to introduce our guest in the studio. Our guest today is a man who, who has come on the show more than once, but today he's coming to talk about something different. He's a director at the Center for International Advanced and Professional Studies. His name is Anthony Killer, and he's here to talk to us about culture pre preservation, particularly in regards to his upcoming book, Yoruba by Proverbs. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having Welcome, me. Sir. Thank you for having me. So for you to decide to write a book about Yoruba by proverb, I'm sure yes. you've realized that we have a problem on our hands when it comes to our cultures and our preservation of our cultures, starting first with our languages. I know if I were to put, do a poll yes. and say in this building, how many people can confidently speak their language flawlessly, yeah. there would be a massive fail. And I'm guilty as well. You're guilty as well. Exactly. So how do we remedy this? Well, let us start by seeing where the problem is. I'm not as worried as you about people not speaking their language because most people cannot, who cannot speak their language, they probably cannot speak any language very well. If we remedy it very well, the way to look at it is to stop saying our language, their language, and to train people to speak and write very well, generally. We have to embrace culture globally. Because you see, there's a myth of this um, identity politics and um, policy and um, orientation. The truth is, in Nigeria today, the pop culture has been well. Um, when I was growing up, we danced Shalama, we danced foreign music. Most people dance Nigerian music today. So in a way, that side is winning. What is not winning is the high culture. I define high culture as the culture of the elites, you know, the way the elites live. They have not imposed a culture in Nigerian African countries. Elsewhere, you have the music of the masses. Then you have the opera. You have the kind of films they watch. So we haven't done that kind of thing here. We, so the question is, are we being eroded by a culture that is not ours, and we are somewhere in between, aping and imitating something else? Yes, that, that is true. But the way to do it is to train people to embrace culture generally. And then some institutions will then work hard to promote certain kind of cultures. And institutions start from writers, government, organizations. That's the way to do it. Because okay. ironically, if you look at it, our biggest exports, people like Wale Shoinka, people like Fela, are people actually based on their culture properly. We need to let people realize that it is for their own benefit to know their own culture rather than talk them down. Okay, so there's always been that belief that if you wanted a person yes. to get, you know, to speak the language like she mentioned yes. fluently, it would be better to teach such a person from when he was a child. Absolutely. So, is that correct? But is that, does that also mean that anybody who's grown yes. can't I, learn? No, I don't think so. I think you, you can learn at any time. I mean, I, just to make sure, you know, I, I improve my Europe, I, I, I continue learning as an adult, you know, got teachers. You can always learn. It helps as a child. You see, the thing of... A child, we have an opportunity in Nigeria which we don't use. Because we speak English officially and we have our own Nigerian languages, every Nigerian should be minimal, at the barest level, should be bilingual, fluent bilingual. The problem is we're not fluent in any of the two. And I think most it's because us. most parents, as yes. I've seen in many homes, yeah. you see that you try to speak a language to a child yes. and the father or the mother says, oh, don't speak to her, she doesn't understand. Yeah. There's a belief yeah. That if you speak a language, a Nigerian language to a child that is not English language, yes. that would affect the spoken or the written English of the yes. child. Yes. So maybe you should help us with that on myth or fact. How true is that? Um, it's not true. The 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 error is an is an error. You see, the problem is that nobody has actually explained it well to them that if you open a little child to more languages, it actually helps their development, not just for languages. Both of all the things, even for maths, because the side of the brain that learns very well works a lot on languages. So ideally, people should allow people to speak different languages. But, but then again, you can't really blame them, because the truth of the matter is that there is, for some decades in the country, there's been the idea that the path to success is being very Western. And so exactly. you cannot blame them for that. I was going to ask you that. Don't you also think that another reason why we're fast losing this is because we find a natural, um, a natural love for Western culture. We find that people oftentimes would 
rather their children learn foreign languages than learn Nigerian languages. Matter of fact, in schools today, yeah. schools you see, when I was growing up, we used to have like Yoruba classes. Yeah. I don't know if there's still Yoruba classes. Well, they are the there, they are there. You but see, but it's you not as enforced as Mandarin, German, no, you see, let's, let's be careful. I like to be very practical in my things. I don't blame them for doing that. If you speak fluent French, chances are you can get a job that that French would, would be beneficial for your speaking French. I mean, if you get language that's not going to give you anything, chances are that you won't want to do it. So don't blame them. What we should push for is to say that, do we like our language? Do we like our culture? Those in charge of it, it doesn't have to be anybody. If you're a doctor, if you're a medical doctor, it's not your business to worry about the culture or, the, or your language. You're just going to treat patients. Those who are charged to take care of it should do it well. The reason why the French culture, the English culture, is doing well is because while some people are selling shoes and injections, there are some people who are sitting there to actually push the culture forward. And that is why even in Nigeria, you have the German um, Institute for their culture and languages, you have the French Institute, you have the British ones, you have the British Council, you have the different ones. So what we need to think about is how do we consolidate our culture and make it attractive? You see, the, the book we're talking about today, or where you remember by Proverbs, it's something that shows how we can be global by yet being ourselves. Where we don't have to do this versus us. It's not a book written to preserve Yoruba culture. It's a book that shows that through one culture, you can understand things globally. Through understanding the culture, the society, you can see how similar humanity can be. Because if we really, you know, if we really want to play in this global world. We have to be able to think globally and yet act locally. Know thyself and be able to project yourself. But to project yourself, you have to project yourself in a way that others can understand you. And, and that is the secret weapon of the Western culture we emulate. I mean, it's very tough. We have to work harder. Let's, let's tell ourselves the truth. If you want people to speak Yoruba Hausa or, or Nupi anything, well, you have to translate physics in that language. You know, we struggle. That's the truth of the matter. So rather than saying to people, shame on you, you can't speak your language, let those who have chosen to be the defenders of language and culture make it attractive, make it useful to people. At least that is my take. I believe in persuasion, not coercing people. Okay, so if we're going to, we've been talking about culture, yes. and we've based a lot of this discussion on languages. Yes. Now, I want to give an example. Yes. For example, our African dressing. Yes. Now, I love the Ankara. Yes. And I love Georgies and the natives with the prints and all the colors. Yes. But even in this setting, for example, yes. one of the days coming on the show, I wanted to wear an Ankara dress. Yes. And the stylist said, no, sorry, it's not Friday. You, you can't wear You it. can't wear that. Yes. Now, I'm asking, then I'm going to give an exa example. I was at an event where on a Monday, a British guy came and he came in with a suit made with the Ankara print. Yes. Now, when I asked him why wear that, yes. he said, Africa has so much colors in fabric. Yes. And I don't know why the world is not rocking that. Yes. So why are we aiming to be like these guys? Yes. While from what I see, they're trying to be like us. Well, that's the world. We, we all tend to look for what we don't have. The, the problem is that we've been lazy. You know, I'm very brutal about it. We've not been able to tap into what we call the natural instinct for diversity. If you look at it, short people are always marrying tall people. You know, rich people, are, poor people are always trying to marry rich people. That one is changing. It's subject to, subject to arguments for another day, but let's go ahead. <laughs> it's not, it's not gender-based, by the way. If you mention, I said people, yeah. not men or women. Yeah. So, in a way, <laughs> we all tend to look for what we don't have. It is the duty of people who are in charge of it to tap into that. I think we've so far, we've acted with our culture, like many things we do, in a lazy way. You know, we've just said, wear it, don't wear it. If there are designers who want to tap into your desire to wear Ankara, what they should do is to combine colors and fabric, patterns and shades that will fit into an office way and it will go well. The office wants you to be corporate, not to flurry, so you don't distract people. So it has to be a sober color. So somebody has to sit down and say, I want to make Ankara for offices. And there's an opportunity there. Yeah. Not just trying to wear the normal one. There is an opportunity there. And we need to look at it. Somebody has to say, 
maybe the Westerners like Nigerian clothes. Let me export for them. But then to export for them, you have to meet a certain quality, which is the word quality. I, I, I dare say that our Nigerian designers are doing a lot. They're doing really well with yeah. regards to fit, filling in that need. They're playing a lot with our fabric. So yeah. shout out to all our Nigerian designers. Absolutely. Let's bring back the conversation to Yoruba by Proverbs. Yes. So launching your book. Yes. When is it happening? Where is it happening? And how can people be It's going to happen in Lagos. Um, it's going to happen at the auditorium of SEAT. And that's in um, Adini Jones um, in Ikeja. It's the um, Thursday, 29th of November. And um, people can, um, it's, all, it's strictly by re uh, reservation, okay. sorry, by invitation. But you can ask for an invitation. If you go online onto um, cavs.org, you can look at the website. You can actually just Google it now. It's easier. And you can um, reserve a place to attend the event. As long as we know your name, you're coming. We'll let you in. All right. Why, so why, why yeah. Yes. <laughs> sorry. I was going to ask, why the title to your Baba Proverbs? Why Yoruba by Proverbs? Okay, for two reasons. Generally, as um, a big lover of Karl Kraus, the, um, the German uh, Austrian writer that wrote in the 17th century, I believe that where you can say less, you shouldn't say more. I enjoy that. You know, straight to the point, clean and crispy all the time in communication. But also because proverb is a way to study culture and society. Because cultures, proverbs are built around observations the beliefs and vicissitudes of societies and culture. So I use this, this proverb, we've used it as a key to go into the Yoruba culture. So basically, it's a book full of Yoruba proverbs. Yes, and then uh, full of analysis of the society as well. Oh, brilliant. And the culture. So you take, the, you take a proverb and you look at it and it allows you to understand the mindset of that culture. Give us one proverb, but don't explain it. They'll, they'll get to see the explanation in the book. And, I, and I'll tell you in Yoruba. Okay. Any fair area, or fair Yonu. Okay. I'm going to even say one. Yes. Ogwa di ye ole shere fo go odro. Honey, we straight our skills. Okay, okay thank you so much for joining us. How can people get to follow you on social media? Um, Anthony Kila. That's right. just my name, whether it's Twitter or, or Instagram. Okay. Just, I keep you safe. To enjoy more of this, our Ogunke videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.